In today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can use Premiere Pro to edit your pasta salmon. Shalom to you my friends, my name is Isaac from Trego Studios. On this channel, we train media volunteers to become well equipped in their service to God in the media. If that sounds like you, I want you to consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification bell beside the subscription button so that you can get notified the next time we post a new video. So like I said at the beginning of this video, this tutorial is about showing you how you can use Premiere Pro which is a video editing software to edit your pastor sermon which you recorded during a service. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do obviously is to launch your Premiere Pro software. I am going to be demonstrating this using Adobe Premiere Pro 2021, but the basic ideas that I'm going to be sharing in this video works the same way, regardless of which version of Premiere Pro you're using. The idea is basically the same. Of course, there are some features that are available in 2021 that are not available in lower versions of Premiere Pro, and there are some features in 2022 Premiere Pro which are not available in this 2021. Uh, version which I am using so but the idea is basically the same so the first thing you have to do when you launch your software is to create a new project now this if you have an existing project which you have done before you're going to see them listed here but if you don't and even if you do and you want to create a new project this is how you go about creating a new project so I'm going to click new project here so just locate where the new project is on the version of prayer prayer using so and we're going to be asked to name our project so I am going to name this Trego Studios Premiere Pro Tutorial so you can decide to select where you want your files to be saved our advice that you have is specific place where you save all your Premiere Pro projects. It could be in an external hard drive or in an hard drive in the computer. I would prefer that you have it in an hard drive on the computer and then make a duplicate of it on your external hard drive. But regardless of whichever method you choose, just make sure that you have a selected place where you save your Premiere Pro files so that when you are looking for projects, it can be easy for you to search and get access to it in case it is not the on your recent projects so you can know where exactly you are saving to all right so i've selected mine the folder where i want to save my files is inside Trego studios i'm going to select the folder and i'm going to leave the remaining settings as it is now before i leave this place inside this general settings you'll notice that in the render there are two options there now these options is going to be two if you have a dedicated graphics card now this computer i'm using has a dedicated graphics card all right so but if you want to render with your cpu you're going to have to select make replay back engine software only but if you have a graphics card you're going to use CUDA, the one that has CUDA, that's Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration. So the beauty of that is that all the processing of the graphics, of the images, the rendering is going to be on your graphics card instead of your CPU. So, and that's going to be faster depending on the power of your graphics card. So, but it's going to take the load off your CPU to your graphics card, all right? So I'm going to leave the remaining settings as it is, and I'm going to click okay so once you click okay it's going to bring out the interface for the project the project interface all right this interface is called the workspace there are different workspaces now in Premiere Pro 2021 they have listed different you know workspace up here which varies in the arrangement you know there is the assembly workspace which looks like this there is the editing workspace there is the color workspace there is the effects workspace there is the audio workspace so each of these workspace has been designed to suit a particular operation that you are working on as at that particular time so if you are going to be working on graphics there's an interface that is already set for that if you are going to be working on effects there's an interface that is set for that but regardless of each of these interfaces you can also design your own interface and name it as you like you are going to understand why you might need to change some of these things to suit your own purpose later as gone in this video but just know for now that you can redesign your interface for whatever project you're working on all right so coming down to this workspace let me explain what each of these sections do now this is a source window so on the source window you have the ability to preview to preview the footages you are going to use it could be pictures it could be videos it could be audio sound that you want to use you can preview whatever it is you want to 
do right here now this is the program view now whatever is going to be put on your final project will be displayed on this program view so the source view helps you to preview what you want to use in the program view now you can choose to bring files directly into the program view without previewing it in the source view but the source view is a great help for you to preview before so that you know what you want to import or what you want to drag into the program view so whatever you see displayed on the program view is what is going to be on your final project after you render it if you don't know what rendering means rendering is the process by which you convert your raw files or your program files into a version that is playable that can be watched on your phones or on your laptops you know if you work on a project inside premiere pro now you can preview a premiere pro project on your mobile phones or on a different laptop that does not have premiere pro so you have to render the files too you're going to render it to a a playable you know version it could be in mp4 or it could be in any format you're going to render it to a playable format that can be used on your phones inside this section or inside each of the sections it's possible to have multiple panels but right now in this section the panel we are in is the source panel all right you can undock panels and so undock means to make it float where it has its own separate window and you can also dock it back into this section any section you can dock it into this section to this section this section this section but basically where it is originally is inside this section so to dock it into a section you are going to click you're going to click the panel name you're going to click the panel name and then drag it here once you click it you are going to see there is a blue icon floating different places where you want to put it now i'm going to dock it inside until I see the blue bar in the horizontal direction, not as a big box and not as a side box, but on the horizontal to dock it within this group. All right, so I'm going to drop it here. Yeah, that's the source. And that's the way you can redesign your own interface. So for instance, if you don't want your source monitor to be here, you can decide to put it in another group or you should create its own separate, you know, panel. A separate section for it where you can dock several things within that section you can even decide to put it in a separate screen where you can preview if you have a second screen now if you make any mistake in undocking your panels you can always reset it to the ori original version of the layout so I, if i want to reset this back to the original layout i'm going to go to windows workspaces and click reset to save the layout now the program monitor on the other side or the program panel which is on this right side is where you are going to see whatsoever is going to be on your final project all right so whatever is on your program preview whatever is on your program panel will eventually be what is going out to the final production so anything that is, is displayed on the program monitor if the program monitor goes blank or if it shows a particular image that image is what is going to be on your final project all right so that's what the program view is meant for or the program panel all right down here you have the project panel you'll notice that there are other panels within this group as well but the basic thing that you work with here is the project panel so this is where you drag in all your files so whatever file you're going to be using to create your project your video files your audio files your graphics files your you know download files whatever files you want to involve in your project visually or audio wise will be dragged or will be imported into this part into this panel all right so that's what the project panel is meant for and if you want to access more panels that are within this group you can click this arrow here so say for instance that you want to access the effects panel so inside the effects panel that's where you have access to various kind of effects that you can use for your video and audio video transition audio transitions you know chroma key whatever effect you want to use that is available within premiere pro you are going to be able to access even presets will be accessed through you know the effect channel and you want to go back to your project channel you click your project and go back to your project channel right here all right now this section of the interface is your toolbar all right these are the tools you're going to be using to edit your project so 
all the equipment you'll be using to cut to join to edit everything is within this panel so i'm going to be showing you what these tools are used for how you can use them so this is a selection tool this is a track selection tool track forward selection tool this is the ripple edit tool this is the razor tool the slip tool the pen tool the hand tool and the type tool so you might not be making use of all of these tools at the same time but there are specific times you will need to make use of these tools and i'm going to explain the major ones that you need for you to edit your pasta salmon now this panel is the timeline panel all right so this is the panel where you're going to create your sequence now your sequence is where your files are going to be arranged so you can choose to bring two cameras together within a sequence but it will be displayed on this timeline panel so your sequence will be shown on this timeline panel just like you can see it says timeline no sequences so you can have multiple sequences in a single project all right you can have multiple sequences in a single project now and those sequences will be arranged up here you know they can be docked within this section where you can switch between which sequence you, are, you want to work with part time i'm going to demonstrate this in a later tutorial so make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you can be notified when i post this video so i believe you have learned one thing or the other in today's tutorial if so i want you to click the like button and share this video with your friends in the media who might need this video to learn and to improve in their skills as a self-guard through the media so till i come your way next time in a new tutorial remain in the lord's service god bless you thank you